is a severe weather alert. On Wednesday, large and powerful storms at the Blue Mountains region and also the southern highlands. These storms then formed anvil clouds, which then within them had the modest clouds. What you're seeing on screen is the result of these storms in the Blue Mountains and the resulting anvil cloud that rolled over Sydney. These modest clouds were widespread throughout the Sydney area. Many photos, many videos popping up on social media, as you can see on screen. Very spectacular, but that's actually what was happening in the Blue Mountains there. Hailstorms, also very heavy rain with thunderstorms coming through. And at one point, we actually had supercell storms hitting parts of the Blue Mountains and the Southern Highlands as well. Now, these, uh, these severe storms look to continue, potentially redevelop again on Thursday afternoon. I'll get to that in a second. Here you can see Katoomba, the vision of hail that came down. It's about two to three centimeters in diameter. Reports of some roof damage there due to these hail storms. Uh, looking at the radar imagery, you can see how they popped up during the afternoon and then became fairly widespread across the Southern Highlands, Central Ranges, and even some areas of the West and Riverina getting some isolated storms coming through as well. With the rainfall rates, the storms were fairly strong. In fact, uh, Katoomba had uh, 15 millimeters in just 10 minutes time. That's enough to cause flash flooding. Mossville just got two millimeters there, and we had rainfall rates around five, six millimeters in other places with thunderstorms. Now, showers and storms look to ease back somewhat overnight, but uh, we are expecting it to redevelop again on Thursday afternoon across a similar area, central and southern ranges of New South Wales, including the highlands and tablelands associated with them. We could even see hail and more modest clouds like what we saw earlier. Other than that, the rest of the country saw fairly benign conditions. We did have very hot temperatures. However, again, on Wednesday, 43 degrees in Alice Springs, Broken Hill, 41 in Adelaide, 34 degrees, but it's getting so much hotter on uh, Thursday for you in South Australia. The heat was really around western parts of the nations where Woolena got to 47 degrees, Leverton 45 and Forest 45, Kalgoorlie 42 degrees. Some areas here are their hottest day in about four years. The forecast temperature shows that this heat is gonna be filtering ahead of this low pressure trough, which is being pushed into South Australia. Uh, just ahead of that cold front. Now, this shading indicates temperatures above 45 degrees, this shading 40 degrees. Look at how hot this is tomorrow, uh, well, really on Friday across large areas of South Australia, western New South Wales, and northern Victoria. As a result of not only 40 degree heat we're seeing in places like Adelaide, we're also seeing elevated fire danger, severe fire danger for the Mount Lofty Ranges, and also the west coast and parts of the Air Peninsula. Fire danger is actually expect expected to worsen on Friday. And to quickly, the Queensland tropics, where Penny redeveloped into a tropical cyclone category one as it moved back out into the Coral Sea. It brought some heavy rain with it, of course, you can see with the radar imagery, but warnings for the heavy rain was canceled. A flood watch remains in place, however, for Cape York Peninsula River catchments. Now, looking at the rainfall to 8 p.m., we had Lockhart River getting 28 millimeters of rainfall, but the system will continue to move away from the coast and potentially strengthen to a Category 2 tropical cyclone over the course of Thursday or Friday. There's a small chance it could make another turn back towards the Queensland coast uh, mid-next week. So for assistance in storm damage, contact the State Emergency Services on 132 500. <laughs> Skies were looking pretty interesting over Sydney during the afternoon on Wednesday with people getting excited on social media as these mammatus clouds formed. This is because we had thunderstorms over the Blue Mountains. We saw large hailstones falling as a result of those storms and that cold air as it sank created these sacks you can see in the clouds over the city of Sydney. Now as we have a look at what's on the way for Sydney and New South Wales on Thursday, we could see some morning fog about the eastern suburbs of the city. It's going to be a mostly sunny day, slight chance of a shower about the west. Elsewhere where things are warming. So from the mid-20s on Wednesday up to 30 degrees for you in Newcastle on Thursday. For those temperatures staying around the mid-20s for you in Wollongong. Warming up as we have a look further ahead into Friday though. Now for the nation's capital, we do have the chance of showers and a thunderstorm coming through for you on Thursday. 34 degrees is the forecast maximum there. So we look further ahead, even hotter with a maximum of 37 degrees on Friday. Now we could also see a late thunderstorm rolling through, mostly sunny for you in Albury. We're going to see temperatures absolutely leaping up across parts of Victoria on Friday. Ahead of that, 
Another warm day, 28 degrees for you in Melbourne, so warmer than you did experience on Wednesday. We're also going to see those temperatures rising across other areas in the state, so up to 37 degrees in Bendigo, but that's jumping to 44 degrees with a scorcher of a day coming through on Friday. We are going to see a late change arriving, though, and that's going to be quite a gusty change. Into Tasmania, now 28 degrees for you in Hobart, getting all the way up to 36 degrees on Friday. So those temperatures around 14 degrees above the average for this time of year. It's going to be a very hot day, but then after that, we're also going to see the change coming through for you. Now, that heat is going to be in South Australia on Thursday, 41 degrees in Adelaide, Glenelg, 38 degrees for you in Stirling. So those temperatures well above average for this time of year. We are going to see things cooling down as we look further ahead into Friday and then cooling even more substantially into the weekend. We saw cloud cover keeping temperatures mild in Perth over the course of the day on Wednesday. It only got to 24 degrees and that's the maximum again on Thursday. A morning shower or two ahead of a sunny afternoon. Similar story in Fremantle. Partly cloudy in Bunbury and it's going to stay partly cloudy through into Friday. Temperatures are warming up slightly though. In the tropics we do have the chance of a shower or two for you in Darwin and a possible thunderstorm. That's consistent across Thursday and Friday. With tropical cyclone Penny sitting out in the Coral Sea, we are seeing those rainfall totals easing back around Cairns, Townsville and Mackay. We could still see a thunderstorm firing up in Rockhampton over the course of the day on Thursday. We are also expecting some light showers to come through on Friday. Those temperatures are staying warm. It's also looking warm in southern Queensland. We've got the chance of a shower for you in places including Ipswich, the Sunshine Coast, the Gold Coast and Toowoomba and the chance of a storm across most of our centres except for Toowoomba on Thursday. Looking mostly dry, just a slight chance of a shower on Friday and those temperatures a little bit warmer getting to a top of 31 degrees in Brisbane. Penny's brought heavy rainfall to far northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula in Queensland and uh, look, it could make a re-return. What you're seeing on screen is areas north of around the Lockhart River region and in the Gulf of Carpentaria around the Weipa area where we have some very, very gusty winds coming through as they made landfall earlier. We've seen now totals over 100 millimeters for some of these regions. It's fairly normal to get cyclones like this and thankfully it was only a category one system, but it could strengthen even further. And as it does, you know, Cyclones bring more than rain. They also bring impacts to the coastline and those winds. You can see storm surge coming through and some stormy waves as well around that Weipo region. Uh, aside from that, we've also continued to see great rainfall for northern parts of the territory, including around the top end, Adelaide River region, getting some nice rainfall totals overnight. We are going to continue to see Penny strengthen over the next few days as it moves into the Coral Sea. It might make a right-hand turn about Sunday and then move right back to the Queensland coast uh, about Monday or Tuesday or so. In between now and then, it's actually a fairly dry week. We do have showers and storms nearly each and every day on the central and southern ranges of New South Wales. They could even be severe heavy rainfall, maybe even hail risk and those sort of thunderstorms. And then from about Sunday onwards, we get a southeasterly change, bringing showers to the Queensland and New South Wales coast. And you can also see whatever rain remains a penny may even move inland in Queensland, bringing some very heavy rain there. But it's too early to call exactly how this is going to be playing out. There is a lot of model discrepancy here, but it does look like it's strengthening. And there's about a coin toss out of it, making back to the Queensland coast. Forecast rain for Thursday, showers and storms, bringing totals maybe even in excess of 15 millimeters for the central southern ranges and highlands of New South Wales. The odd shower for the Queensland coast, 10 millimetres around the Wide Bay, Burnett, Navy, Capricornia coastline and monsoonal falls for the far north Queensland peninsula region. Uh, that'll ease back on Friday. Showers and storms will continue across parts of the top end, maybe even the odd storm across central New South Wales there. Storms intensify maybe about 15, 20 millimetres, parts of the Gippsland, southern ranges of New South Wales with severe storms and then showers for the coast on Sunday. On Sunday, we're going to see rain increase for Queensland as if Penny would make a uh, turn towards the coastline, so it's highly dependent on the track of Penny there. And as you can see, Monday, models are forecasting an increase of rain if Penny decides to make landfall again. So uh, although we are going to be seeing some rain across southeast New South Wales, eastern parts of Victoria, the vast majority of the rain this week is concentrated in the tropics. And if Penny makes landfall again early next week, we could even see very heavy rain for central Queensland coast, maybe even over 100 millimetres. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ouf, now what the first weekend of the new year is set to bring and it's going to be cooler conditions across the southeast and the south of the country in the wake of a cold front moving through ahead of that. Of course, scorching conditions for parts of South Australia and Victoria on Thursday and Friday. We're going to see the cooler weather moving in to New South Wales over the course of the day on Sunday. So chance of some showers and possibly thunderstorms, but most notably that drop in temperature, which is going to go from the 30s down into the 20s for places including Sydney and Canberra. Let's look at those temperatures now. So 33 degrees with the chance of showers developing Sydney and also Canberra on Saturday. Much cooler across the south. 22 degrees in Melbourne. That's after 42 degrees is the maximum on Friday. And those temperatures mild for you in Adelaide. 26 degrees. Beautiful sunny and 30 degrees in the west. But as we have a look at Sunday, temperatures getting up to 35 degrees in Perth. And note that dropping temperature about the southeast. So down into the 20s for both Sydney and Canberra. And we're going to see those showers coming through as well. Staying cool in Melbourne with a top of 22 degrees. Mostly sunny and 30 degrees, your forecast in Brisbane. Dangerous fire weather is forecast on Thursday and Friday in southeastern Australia. The temperatures in the mid 30s and low 40s across many populated areas. This is a region which is also seeing drought. Vegetation index shows just how dry it is across the southeast, including large parts of South Australia, northern and central Victoria. Let's take a look at the forecast here. We have a very hot day on Thursday across South Australia. Temperatures are expected to be 40 degrees widespread across the state. The winds aren't too gusty everywhere except for the far west coast, which has, as you can see, severe fire danger, and also the Air Peninsula, and as you can see, the Mount Lofty ranges also with severe fire danger. In this situation, when fires start, they can become unpredictable and out of control. But the fire danger worsens on Friday. That says this cold front rams into the high pressure system that's been stagnant over the Tasman Sea for quite some time. That'll create a very gusty northerly flow with a gusty and sudden southwesterly shift in the afternoon. And southwesterly change also looks very dry. Now, in terms of the fire danger, we're going to see some bad fire danger over southeastern Australia, including Tasmania, where pockets of the southeast, including the Derwent region, are expecting severe fire danger as well. You can see all that orange shading through there. And meanwhile, for the Mallee and the Wimmera, extreme fire danger. We have severe fire danger, Flinders mid-north, and right across central Victoria. In this situation, fires can become unpredictable and out of control. So you need to know what you're going to do in the event of a major bushfire near you. On Wednesday, Sydney saw some spectacular looking clouds, the modest clouds. Why did we see these? Well, in the Blue Mountains, at the same time, we were seeing intense hailstorms. What does this have to do with that? Well, hailstorms form in thunderstorms, right? It's one of the consequences of having severe storms at times. You get these large hailstorms, and that formed in the Blue Mountains. And then the anvil cloud of that storm then moved across the Sydney Basin and formed these spectacular looking modest clouds. So let's recap how storm clouds form, right? So storms are formed by rising air in the atmosphere. As the air rises, it cools down and forms those large towering thunderstorm anvils that you see. The anvil cloud, the top of the storm cloud, then forms and that can be blown several kilometers ahead of the main thunderstorm and as that anvil cloud forms, it can sometimes cool down. Now, if that cools down, it can start to form mammatus clouds. It's sinking air. Mammatus clouds are interesting because they're actually formed from the top down. Usually, clouds are formed from the base up, and it's usually associated with turbulence in the atmosphere. So this is the clouds that we saw right across the city basin on Wednesday. It was actually the top of a thunderstorm cloud in the Blue Mountains. Difficult year for our family, children. Everything's falling to pieces this year. Mary Poppins, huh? Well, um, I've said a lot today because I made a huge video. And I'm glad I did now because having come home and watched the Weather Channel, my martyrs clouds. I did mention them in one of my videos yesterday or the day before. My martyrs means bulbous, bulb-like structures because they shape like a bulb. And that connects to the daffodil. Owen, the daffodil boy, I've talked about iris, the iris is a rhizome, and I've talked about dahlia, the tuba, and lily, lilium is a bulb, and the next cyclone that gets named by Indonesia will be called cyclone lily. The next cyclone that gets named by Australia, well we've got the return of penny, so penny is a 
like I said, Owen is a daffodil boy because Owen came back from the dead. He resurrected. He had two lives. Well, Penny is the same. She's coming back. So she's the same type of storm. She's a bulb. She's going to regenerate. And then we have Riley. Riley equals 69. Turn 6 on a Ted, you get 9. Reflect equals 69. I've seen enough reflections today, including wedge-tailed eagles. Three wedge-tailed eagles flying at Eagle Valley. Probably an appropriate place to see three wedge-tailed eagles. But one of them came so close. And I was just like, whoa. And the storm, there was a hail storm. The hail was roaring. Right next to me, there was lightning came down. Admittedly, I had my back turned to the lightning. It struck behind me. But uh, the thunder I could hear, it came from where there was no storm. And it was like, so much. And now I'm convinced. Penny's the one. Penny's the bad storm. And Riley's a western cowboy. He's a western boy. He's a western boy with a twist. I've been talking about Riley. So he's a western Australian boy. And I've talked about the volcanoes in Indonesia. And I've talked about everything. I've talked about... A lot of things. Riley, unisex name, Lily, Tiger, the Tiger Spirit, Lilium, Lily, the Tiger Lily, the Tiger Lily in the pond. Riley comes from the, the Lily. So it's all making sense. And I'm um, thinking back to the night I made the video in the dark. The video, I wasn't in the dark though because there was a full moon. So I was in the moonlight, and when I said Penny, the horse neighed, and when I said Riley's a cowboy, some people, some guys, some young guys went past, and they were shooting, and one of them yelled out, Yeehaw, just like a cowboy, just after I said it. So I know I'm right now. Penny's the one, Penny's the, the, the scary one, and Riley's the western cowboy, he's a vandal, and vandals... They usually like to show off. So Riley, if he wants to show off, he's probably going to go to Perth. Because Perth is the city. And if Riley wants to show off, he's going to go to the city. Perth. Thornbush. That's what Perth means. Thornbush or thicket. And that connects to some other stuff, which I have talked about. So it all makes sense now. The whole thing makes sense. Penny in the pond. Riley found the penny in the pond. Owen was jealous, so Owen said to Riley, How do you know it's a lucky penny, Riley? How do you know it's not an unlucky penny? And Riley didn't know. He did not know if it was a lucky penny or an unlucky penny. And the only way to find out was to flip it. Heads I win, tails you lose, Owen. Was it heads or tails? Don't know, but he flipped it twice, so he must have lost the first flip. Riley must have lost the first flip to flip it twice because pennies don't do U-turns unless you flip them. 